Okay, this is a bit of a weird experiment. This, I don't know if this is going to work. I've got my phone perched at a very odd angle. I'm going to try and write sideways. A um, couple of tricks for working with uh, digital electronics. First one, writing a sequence of binary numbers really quickly for a truth table. So if you think about your powers of two, you've got one, two, four, eight. So there's your eight, four, two, one code. I'm going to start with my eights. I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two. One, 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 two. And one obviously is just alternating. So we now have a very rapid way of producing a binary number sequence. Now let's write our decimal numbers next to this. So starting with 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Run at let numbers, go to letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So binary coded decimal, just remember up to the 9. And for hexadecimal, notice this, 10 in binary is two tens. It's not really, but that's the pattern. So when you get into the exam room, this is what you're going to do. You're going to say, well, I want to remember some stuff. As soon as they say you can turn over your paper and start writing, somewhere in the margin, start making notes of the things that you want to try and remember. And one of those things is going to be hexadecimal numbers. We well, already know that you can produce binary numbers this way. So to get the decimal ones, hex, the, the, the hexadecimal ones, 10 in binary twos is two tens. And that's going to be, we haven't got a number for it, so it's A. B, C, D, E, F. And then do the normal binary sequence. So we're already on ones here, so one, 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 run out. Going backwards, remember this is 8, 4, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, run out, 1, 2, 1, 2, run out, and this one is just alternating digits. You can now use this and you don't have to sit in an exam room trying to remember which letter is which letter. The last trick I want to show you is 2's complement. 2's complement. Now, you can do this a number of ways. The way you probably learned is to take a binary number, invert it, and add one. But there's a quicker way. Let's take a simple binary number. Let's say 10110. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, how many bits am I working with? And for microprocessors, we're normally working with four bits. So puff it up with some extra zeros. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight bits. Next, start with the rightmost digit. The rule is, copy, if you meet a one, invert what follows. Just remember that rule. So copy the zero, copy the one. Oh, I've met a one, so from now on, I'm going to invert. And there we have binary and two's complement. And the interesting thing is it works backwards. So if we go backwards, starting with the right, copy the zero, copy the one. Oh, now hang on a minute. I've reached the one, so invert everything else. And there all those bits are inverted. So there's a rule here that says the two's complement of the two's complement of something equals that something. Okay, last one which you probably should have known already as well because some people have asked about committing tables to memory is gray code. Gray code, unlike two's complement, is not actually reversible and it's not fixed to a particular number of bits. Write down your binary number, whatever it may be, and you're gonna start with the most significant bit, go one, this is converting to gray code. Take each pair of bits 
and you're going to perform exclusive or. So exclusive or is, if you remember the truth type of exclusive or, A, B, A, exclusive or B. So again, using my little method there, one, two, one, two. And exclusive or is if they're equal, it's a zero. If they're not equal, it's a one. So exclusive or in one and one gives us zero. One and zero gives us one. Zero and one gives us one. And one and zero gives us one again. Converting back again, slightly different. Copy the first digit. And now exclusive or with the previous result and where you're going. So zero and one is one. One and one is zero. I shouldn't say and, it's exclusive all. One exclusive all, zero is one. One exclusive all, zero is zero. And you can see this number is the same as this number. If you can remember rules and shortcuts and then make a note of them when you go into the exam room. So as they say, you can write, scribble some stuff down in the margins, anything that you need to remember. This will help you to answer the questions without having to commit tables to memory. The very last thing I want to show you is the NAND and NOR. Um, nothing brain shattering here. But instead of thinking about NAND or NOR in terms of truth tables or which ones is a one, think about what combination makes them one state only. So NAND, the rule is if any input equals zero, output is one. Don't need a truth table, just remember the rule. Nor is quite the opposite. If any input is opposite of zero is one, output is zero. You can actually use this for and and or as well. Just remember the, the, the combinations where a single input changing causes the output to be a particular value. It's a lot easier and quicker than trying to remember and commit to memory truth tables and, and, um, and uh, conversion tables for codes. Excess three, just add three. But remember you've added three. So if you're doing arithmetic, minute, count how many threes you have to subtract again. You can do it in decimal, convert to binary. You can do it in binary and then convert back to decimal. Remember that in binary, this, uh, three is one, one, two, one, one base two. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps some of you.